Hello, my name's Lawrence Tilly, and uh, you're about to watch a video uh, about how I made a, a model, come sculpture, of uh, a gnome submarine. And uh, it's called the Marcos Gnome Messenger Service Ship Petunia. And I made it firstly as a prop for my Dungeons and Dragons campaign, um, and secondly as an art object in its own right. Uh, the purpose of the video is to is to show you the, the thinking process of the design. Um, so it's not formal design, how they teach it at school with technical drawing and, and accurate modeling and machining and um, all the rest of it. Uh, it's just the, the joy of making up something as I um, go, as I went along. Um, and you'll see ideas come and get ignored, forgotten about, changed um, as I came up with different ideas or got fed up, fed up with one part of the project and moved on to something else. Um, the video editing is all over the place, uh, but hopefully it's watchable. Um, here's your chance to sit on my shoulder and uh, come with me through the uh, highs and lows of the project. This is the uh, image that inspired the project. And um, it's a fantasy submarine, and this is the only image I have. It's was uh, it was on Pinterest, uh, something called diving subcraft inf information inspiration. Uh, it was posted originally by somebody called Ginger Bees, and I can't find the uh, the original image, so uh, it's just this little uh, watermarked thumbprint. Um, and I'm not going to copy it, it's just the inspiration idea. It's just basically taught me to, to uh, make this a sort of steampunky submarine. Uh, the importance of all these struts and wires, um, making it look quite delicate. I like that. And um, I very much like the different sort of colours in the rust. Um, and uh, this is what I'm going to make it from. Um, I've been thinking about the project for about a year now. And... Um, these are bits that are going to go into it. That is the uh, wreckage from two small plumbing jobs, re-plumbing re the siphon of a lavatory system and uh, re-plumbing the waste uh, pipe of uh, a sink. And all those bits were either bits that I took out or bits that most of it actually is bits that came as, as extras. There's even like two bags of spare gaskets and washers, things that uh, were there for if you wanted, had if you had different size pipes. And all that comes as extra in the, in the, the, the kit with the, the siphon uh, and the kit with the, um, the waste section of a, of a sink. And um, I hate throwing stuff like that away. Um, so it's all, all being collected. Uh, and uh, the main thing that I'm going to make the body of the submarine out of is uh, this uh, flat stovetop kettle. It's all been, it went rusty and started leaking and was cheap and rubbish anyway. And um, I like the idea of um, the gnomes because this is a gnome submarine having found a, a giant's kettle. And that's what they've used. Perhaps a, perhaps a god's kettle. And that's what they're going to use for the body of the submarine. Uh, a couple of other bits. There's a remote control thing there. That's the filter of a filter kettle. A couple of placemats. That's the lid of the kettle. The kettle. I'm just worried the dog by doing that. Now, after putting bits aside for a year, I'm going to uh, actually start thinking about which probably just two or three bits to start with I'm going to use to make the basic shape of this uh, freaky submarine. And there, ten minutes later is the basic configuration which is the kettle and um, the siphon part of, uh, of the lavatory system and um, I like I like that the look of that it's got the it's got the kind of length i haven't decided which is going to be the front or the back yet i haven't decided whether or not i will cut the uh, the kettle handle off uh, there's a nice bit of a bit of the 
that's the bit inside the system that connects the toilet handle to the to the rod that pulls the siphon and and this was in there as well this is a this is a pump and it's uh i can't even remember what it is it's like an automatic watering device for garden hose pipes and um it failed and that was that was what was inside it and um that may well go to that, that i thought that looked like a sort of some kind of magical engine or it will do when it's pointed up I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to... Well, the original idea was to cut the submarine in half lengthways or even into into three slices uh, so that I could show it in dock underwater and show the inside of it with the crew and the adventurers. But I've sort of uh, changed my mind on that even as I'm talking. I think that might be too difficult and too much cutting. So... I may well actually model uh, the layout of the inside of the submarine as well as the outside. Uh, that always works quite well with um, fantasy buildings and the like. You can have the building on your table and tell your players that's the building that you're in. And then you can have the floor plan of the building out in front of the building itself. And uh, the theatre of the mind kicks in very well to make that work so the next step step will be to uh, get the get, get measuring and shaping and uh, get the dremel tool cutting uh, onto onto this so that that straight line will marry onto this or uh, simply stick them together and then with some card uh, build out the uh, the gap uh, between the straight surface and the curved surface of the kettle that's the next task always thinking as i go along now using that dremel tool i've uh, removed the handle um, by just taking out the little rivets that held that together cutting those off and then out of this piece of siphon i just cut Getting a little template first that matched the curve of the kettle. I've just, using a different blade, one designed for cutting plastics, I've just cut that little bit of curve out of there, which just lets that sit a little bit more snugly. And now I've got to build with cardboard the, the shape that's going to actually join that together. And these holes on the side, uh, they're actually for a little plastic clip one is one is blocked and two are open. That little plastic clip actually lets you alter the uh, the volume of the siphon, so you can set a lavatory system for a, a larger flush or a slightly smaller flush, or change the water level in the in the system. But don't they look just like portholes? Hot glue gun didn't work. Um, I needed a to get those two pieces into alignment while I do the next stage. Uh, I needed a, a temporary bond. The hot glue gun didn't work, but hopefully this has worked, which is Evo stick. No, it hasn't worked. Okay. So that hasn't been allowed to set long enough. I might just show you mistakes. That's gonna have to be propped up temporarily as well. Propping that up with a pair of safety specs for the moment. Find something better than that. And uh, the idea is that this is going to have to be shaped over that awkward gap. And I'm going to have to work out a template. First by making it in paper. And then possibly by making that in card later on. But first I've got to allow that contact adhesive to set fully. It sticks together after a while, but it can take an hour or more to go completely hard. I decided to prop up that um, end section with a masking tape and a little yogurt drink pot because the, the temporary join here was just proving too temporary. And um, this is going to be the, this is the attempt to make the template for the, the joining section. 
but it's just not working because I'm not able to get my finger in behind that paper. Uh, so it doesn't matter it's that the, the sticking it together temporarily is going to be what I need uh, for drawing the line all the way around, which is going to be the cut line. And I've gone from initially having the idea that I would have uh, the submarine in two parts so that you could open it and show the, the, the submarine as it looked when it's uh, semi submerged and take the top off then to show the inside. Uh, which will actually be the crew area. And I went from deciding that's what I'd do to deciding that's you know, going to be too difficult to then going back to deciding that's what I'm going to do. So next it's to uh, decide where to draw the line. I think it will probably be at that sort of height. Draw that line on all the way round by uh, measuring the height from the sur surface and trying to get it as straight as possible. Uh, and then uh, cutting, uh, which will need different cutting tools and the Dremel, and will make a lot of a lot of sparks and a lot of a lot of nasty melting bits of fraying horrible plastic. Let's hope it will be worth it. I've just uh, taped a pen to uh, a tongue depressor, and that'll uh, that'll be used to mark the height. I can actually see it's completely wrong on this side, so I need to adjust that back section a little bit, a little bit more. But it is um, going to be the line that I use. I need to make sure it's the same height on both sides. At the moment, it's not. I can judge it by where it comes to on the the lower part of this little back section there. So I'll dismantle it now and then use the use. This uh, this temporary gadget, or some very careful measuring, to make sure it's going to be the same on both sides. This is very hard because uh, I only have a camera that I have to hold, but it is very easy to cut the material with a with a Dremel film. Here's the uh, kettle cut in half. It's not the perfect straight line ever, but it'll it'll do. It's going to be protected by a sort of cardboard flange. I need to uh, sand it with a little bit of emery paper, and um, the the back section is almost completely cut through. Um, then I did notice there's a little tiny bit just inside there that the Dremel tool can't get to, so. That's why sort of tool to have in your tool kit that you'll use only once in a blue moon, but is a godsend. You have it as a keyhole saw, and that, that blade can be extended out to get into narrow spaces like that. So I shall cut that last little bit of plastic through by hand. And I'm anxious for you to see how um, I'm designing as I go along, and I'm designing and writing the, the story for a D&D adventure um, at, the, at the same time and um, that was that was going to be the the top for, for when I'm actually sort of we're actually uh, role playing the storyline of what happens inside there's going to be a deck uh, across there that I might make out of lollipop sticks or something or other um, and that bit underneath would be just completely waste and, and, and in the story you'd say I suppose oh that's the the, the, the ballast tanks area, the part of a submarine that you don't normally see. But then thinking that through, I had the most exciting idea. I suddenly thought Thunderbird 2 and Thunderbird 4. And I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a hatch doors at the front there uh, that the gnomes can open when they're in difficulty and then something comes out, um, either some sort of nice, friendly D&D &D monster that they've tamed or enslaved or even a mini sub maybe so the ideas are forming as the work continues this is um the back piece so maybe it's the front piece i haven't actually even decided which way the uh, submarine is supposed to be 
troubling yeah and that uh, which I was I was inclined to at one point to sort of just just cut off is going to be a sort of uh, mounted on the top rear or forward observation window a little observation deck and um, I need to put something transparent in there to look like uh, glass steel if you if you remember d d Basic or First Edition in scenarios, glass steel always appeared rather a lot. And I don't know why it fell out of fashion. Because it was a very good wizardly solution for uh, stopping player characters get from one side of um, a room to another. Because they'd met an invisible wall that they couldn't break through without magic. I think friggin' that's what the gnomes will be using. So... Um, there's a couple of uh, PET bottles, and then there's this junk packaging. All of that comes out of this, which is a totally unnecessary box and insert plastic tray uh, that comes with a tube of toothpaste, would you believe? Uh, but looking at these, I think that well, at the end of one of these bottles is going to make a nice structure. I'm going to try and cut a circular disc out of these one of one of those or both and see which one then looks best maybe and uh, fit that to the end of there maybe painting the the actual thinner parts of the star shape there to look like uh, steel or mithril struts So uh, this uh, so this lovely pair of uh, calipers was uh, about a tenner. Took a few weeks to come from China, but electronic calipers a very nice little tool to have and astonishingly cheap. The internal diameter of the of the circle was uh, forty seven point six three millimeters, which is very precise. I uh, use that to. Calculate uh, the radius of the circle, compasses, drew the circle, cut the bottom of the bottle off, push, positioned it over, because it was so irregular, positioned it over the circle I'd drawn, and then used a sharpie to uh, mark out the, the circle on the very irregular surface, trimmed it a lot with a pair of uh, very, very tiny scissors, and that fits more or less. It's not completely smooth and regular. It will need that will now need to be stick, stuck together because the, the this blue ring is loose. It's for tightening to the piece that was originally below it. Um, and at the very end there, there's a like a, a, a pontil mark that the where the plastic was originally thrown into the ejection injection moulding. Um, but that'll be all right. I'll either, I'll either put some kind of crest on there, or maybe I'll use that as a point at which to uh, attach a spar to um, conceal that and um, the actual I, 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 I've I'm still of the opinion that I will paint those uh, star shaped parts um, to look uh, like them, them them metal so that it's made up into of individual panes looking like a middle like a window that is maybe a little bit medieval as well as being magically created. The um, cut has allowed me to lay the two pieces that are going to be the bottom of the submarine flat on the surface which has helped me to align them uh, nicely and I uh, stuck the uh, two together with construction adhesive in a mastic gun and uh, that's not going to be enough to hold it um, but it might hold it temporarily enough um, that I can turn it upside down and apply a, a glue a lot more liberally on the inside. Um, but first, that's going to need uh, 24 hours to achieve its full hardness and uh, hope it holds until I can reinforce it on the inside. So this is the uh, cork tile glued on and uh, sanded all the way around. And it doesn't matter that it's a bit... Uh, 
the rust effects on it, like in the original image. I'm going to get these top two sections to uh, go together and get that cowling uh, in that's going to join the uh, plastic part to the to the metal kettle. Uh, it's probably just going to be a case in the end of uh, sort of wrestling with with the uh, paper or thin card until I beat it into roughly the right shape and and try to fix it all together. Uh, but while I'm thinking about that, it's going to be uh, facing in that direction. It's starting to look like the, the, the kettle spout, um, and that's going to be a raised viewing sort of observation. While well, I've got this as a separate part, before that's glued awkwardly to the back part, I can do some work on this. This is a, it used to be a top whistling kettle. One of the reasons I chucked it out, apart from the fact that it got a bit leaky, was that it didn't whistle properly. That curious kind of bent hole on there is obviously supposed to, not supposed to make it whistle and didn't. But looking at that, I think I'm going to remove this entirely. I think I'm going to cut through uh, that rivet again with my Dremel tool. And then something's going to need to be done. I think I'm going to get on eBay and I'm going to order a taxidermy eye. They're quite cheap. So the first thing to do will be the calipers again and measure that. Usually those sort of things, um, if I buy them from a UK supplier, uh, cost a little bit more, but they usually come within a few days. And that's um, that'll be fine because I'll be working on other parts of the make while that's awaited. So this is the uh, cork tile glued on and uh, sanded all the way around. And it doesn't matter that it's a bit uh, rust effects on it, like in the original image. I'm going to get these top two sections to uh, go together and get that cowling uh, in that's going to join the uh, plastic part. This is about a month later and um, Christmas and other things got in the way. And this I think is a, a low point in the project because this has not worked. I, I, the only thing I've done in that month is I put on about four layers of this uh, fabric stiffener. Uh, that worked quite well and, and then I got a bit impatient with it and I rushed it and I, I put a uh, PVA adhesive on which thickened it up and hardened it up a lot but also uh, made it sort of shrink and crinkle and uh, even, the, even the, the, the alignment of the two pieces has gone out and I'm not happy with, uh, with this effect, this, this look. Um, so yeah, feeling a bit frustrated with this at the moment but that's the kind of point that you meet in all projects um i've been thinking a lot about what to do as a fix i thought maybe putting plates of uh, cardboard but to, to sort of represent riveted metal plates that's not going to happen uh, i'm going to mix up some papier mache with uh, pva glue and uh, toilet paper tissue and uh, plaster it onto that surface after I've taped it all up to, to give it rigidity and stop it distorting anymore. Um, and then I'll be uh, cutting and sanding that uh, uh, papier mache to uh, make it look solid. A few days have passed. This is uh, the papier mache, or rather, paper pulp because there's no strips involved and um, you can just hear how hard and rock solid that is it didn't dry for 48 hours I've forgotten just how long uh, it takes because it's been a long time since I've used the, the, the process I had to put a fan heater on it in the end for a few hours uh, but once it's dry it's just the most wonderful stuff it has slumped a little bit and uh, it's there's a there's a, a gap under there uh, when working with papier mache, you very often have to apply more than one layer. This is certainly going to need at least one more uh, layer to build up that top surface. These side surfaces are are fine. They're just going to need a, a sand, and then after sanding, it might need a little bit of patching up. But first, there's got to be a, a thick layer uh, on the top there to deal with that gap problem, and a few more hours with a fan heater. This is after three layers, and uh, it's it's rock hard now. And I'm just going to 
smooth off that surface. I want a rough surface because I want it to look rusted or um, affected by verdigris. And I'm going to just smooth over that surface with the decorator's cork, which is a dead cheap. And I'll smooth it mostly with my fingers and um, just maybe a little bit of uh, finishing off with uh, this tool, which is a, uh, a painter's palette knife. Now that's had a layer of cork and it's uh, really much smoother. It's going to need one more layer, but uh, it takes 24 hours to dry. So just before I put more on that and have uh, difficulty handling it, um, I've decided that one thing that's stopping, sorry, uh, one thing that's making it not look as much of a submarine-ish shape as I like is the lack of a conning tower. So I'm going to lose the, the knob of the of the kettle, it's going to look a little bit less obviously like something that's been made not from a giant's kettle. Um, but I am going to uh, cut cut this down so that that's going to, again it's, it's the difficult marrying of strange curves, asymmetric joins. Uh, but I'm going to cut that down and make that into a conning tower. I think that's going to uh, be an important change to the profile. So that's uh, cut and uh, stuck on there. My construction adhesive of it all gunked up. So that's gone on there with uh, epoxy, epoxy glue and it will need a lot of uh, filling uh, around that around that edge where I can't quite get the, the the curves correct. It's mostly just guesswork and trimming away with a pair of scissors. There's just a pot of something on top as a as a weight to hold it together. That's uh, going to take at least two hours to even begin to set uh, because it's not a, a nice fast setting one. I haven't spent any money on this project at all yet. It's all been made out of junk and things I happen to have. So sometimes I'm not using the absolute optimal glue because uh, I don't have it. Uh, I say I haven't spent any money on the project until now. I have measured that front spout of the kettle and uh, on eBay I bought some uh, of these eyes. These are only um, cheap ones, they're not the really high standard taxidermy eyes. Um, but unfortunately it was a packet of, I don't know, this many. Um, so it wasn't that cheap. Uh, and I want uh, one eye for the project because I've decided that the, the submarine is going to be semi-sentient. The gnomes have um, obviously got some sort of creature and somehow uh, welded part of its organic brainstem, perhaps, um, or at least its optic nerve into the uh, into the. The submarine. I need to choose one of these eyes. I, I, I think I want it to be, you know, friendly. This the, the submarine is assisting the PCs, so um, I think it, I think that's a fairly friendly sort of eye. Well, relatively, I want to give it an eye of Sauron, and that's going to be somehow integrated into there. Because what you're what you're creating here is a um, is a stage set for uh, the players to. Kind of make a story in, and um, it will be quite cool at some stage to have the the gnomes pull a pull a lever which pulls a wire which causes that front of the whistling kettle to open up, and we'll have the eye inside there. I've got to find some way now of cutting a, a disc of card or something that's going to fit in there and, and act as a support. For that eye to to stick to, you have to be very careful with these. I've done projects with these before, and um, sometimes the backing is uh, uh, a transfer. This actually looks like it's got paper on the back, which is which is good. But the uh, I've used them before where the backing is um, a, a transfer, and as soon as that transfer comes into uh, contact with with water, uh, and you've got. Uh, water in most adhesives um, it, it uh, goes uh, all, all blurry um, and uh, project ruined you've got to take it off and get another taxi taxidermy eye and find a way of fixing it in place 
uh, without any moisture coming into contact with the, the back of it. Okay, I'm desperate not to make not to make this uh, video not too long, but I've just got to show you this because this is this is cool. Uh, calipers, uh, plastic calipers um, by Draper, which is a well-known company. If they're not a knockoff, that they were two pairs of these, strangely, uh, on eBay for a pound, and they're wonderful things because there's a there's a little rim around that circle, and I need to make a cardboard disc that I can push up from the inside. Um, and that's going to stop short of going through that rim. So with the calipers I, and that little that little hooky bit on the on the end there, I can go through and measure the inside diameter, not including the folded over rim of that kettle spout. And it's uh, about two point nine, yeah, two point nine. And uh, I make a note of that. And then with uh, uh, ordinary compass, I can make a cardboard disc that's 2.9 in in uh, diameter. That's uh, stuck on with construction adhesive and uh, more um, of the finishing plaster, what's called the cork, uh, just added on there. This part of the project is getting a bit boring now because it's layer after layer after layer of patience. Um, this might be something else to show you. Uh, this is going to be the circular piece of glass steel, which is a thing that you used to get in uh, d and Basic Wizards make it. And gnomes would like it. It's like a sort of wall, of wall of steel spell that could be done with magical glass. And I've chopped up a, uh, a PET bottle water bottle and found the, the 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 part of it that's the most like a complete curve though of course all the curves in it are actually quite irregular and then it's just a case of that's that's my that's my circle uh, measured with the calipers and then it's just a case of very very carefully trimming it down so that eventually it will lay flat over that circle uh, or almost flat like a, a watch glass this is a why on earth did I start this uh, part of the task? Uh, it's going to drive me mad. This is going to be rivets. So the two parts of the, uh, the, the submarine, the top part and the second part, um, are going to be linked together so that I can take it apart in play, but not make it obvious that it's going to come apart. With, it, with this this band um, of whatever copper or, or steel that they've made it out of. And uh, this is going to be rivets. So, the thing to know about rivets, if you ever look at any any anything that's been riveted for real, and riveting is what was used for joining big pieces of metal uh, from the 19th century right through, well into the 20th century, it was the main way of joining pl plate metal. Um, you notice they're very, very close together. And people try to do this and somehow it never quite looks right. And it's because they just haven't put enough rivets in because it's tedious. This is what I'm using. They are uh, two millimeter half round pearls. And uh, they to me looked just right for uh, resembling rivets, which have these uh, rounded off hemispherical ends. And it's everything's going wrong today. Somebody's borrowed my PVA glue, not returned it, which would have been the right glue for this job. So I'm going to be using construction glue again. Uh, magnifying lenses are going to be essential. I bought these, bought these years ago. They cost me about £10. I use them for everything. Absolutely wonderful. And, when, and this comes as a, as a thing, it comes from China. Um, it has a, a light on the, on the top of the visor and batteries underneath. Uh, you need to cut all that off because it's just uh, weight on the on the visor, which you don't want. And even the cocktail sticks have gone missing today. So I've got to use a sharpened matchstick for applying tiny little dabs of glue and then fiddly, fiddly, teeny rivets. Uh, it's a case of finding a good uh, podcast or audio book to listen to, I think, and a lot of patience. So this was actually a bit less tedious than I imagined. This strip has taken me 
about 15 minutes and I found the way to do it is uh, apply the glue a little dob of glue with a uh, sharpened sharpened matchstick and then use uh, the moistened end of a uh, f flat end of a of a matchstick I'm gonna try to actually show you this live to pick up one that is domed side up and then just put it into place having marked it all out very carefully to start with to make it look like rivets you need to be a staggered pair of rows and uh, I've only got those other strips left to do now hopefully it should be done before dark I've um, been filling the area around the, the top of the the iron strip of uh, rivet, rivets that needs uh, another layer the gap was so large in places it needs to be turned into two bits and um, I've just got a, a, a hatch now this is a just a, uh, a pill bottle top and uh, it has a really nice sort of kidney shaped uh, hole in it which I just liked and uh, if providing I remember to open it by that there's going to be a hole in there. Um, it needs to be glued on more firmly. And the inside of that is going to be sprayed black so that it, so the detail won't be apparent in there. So it's just a little uh, strip of cardboard and that's actually even a, another couple of tiny rivets stuck on to that. Uh, what's next? I need uh, some kind of periscope and uh, this uh, old pen. I'll pull it apart with one hand. It's an old broken, uh, jammed pen. The mechanism was jammed. But um, if I cut that off at uh, that point there with the Dremel tool and, and mould with some green stuff, a uh, little um, opening at the, at the top there with a bit of plastic in for a lens, that is going to be the, uh, the periscope structure on the front there. With the strip of cardboard, I have a problem in that it is only thin card. So uh, when I do what I want to do, which is separate the two parts, and uh, when I want to do a scene that's going to take place inside the submarine, I'll probably be inclined to put that down. Well, at the moment, it's not going to support its own weight because it's just... Uh, very thin card, thick paper really. So uh, the idea to give that a bit of support when it's, it's taken apart is going to be to put some uh, bits of bamboo, uh, which is kebab stick. And I'm going to take some bits of this and cut them, put them on there. They'll be not much thick, more much not much thicker than the uh, the cardboard strip. And I'm going to use some green stuff to sort of uh, mould curved bits on the top going back into the body of the submarine so they're going to look like pipes some sort of pipe for releasing air or water or maybe that maybe the bilge pump overflows or something but they will actually uh, there'll be probably six of those they will be little uh, stilts um, disguised as pipework that will support the top half of the submarine when it's uh, taken off and uh, standing on its own, probably off the table, down on the floor or on a side table. In case you wondered uh, where I suddenly get a stuck pen from, um, I just thought I'd show you this, which is uh, a, a box of all sorts of bits, and it's actually labelled robot parts. and. Um, if you're doing this kind of work, the first thing you need to do is start collecting bits. And there's all sorts of buckle top and an old bit of circuit board. And this was the rotating thing from underneath the dish of a uh, the bottom plate of a microwave. And there's a shoe polished tin and a bit, bit, of a, bit of a motor or an engine there. And then there's an inner box for very small pieces. And I've got more than one box like this. Um, and, and just in thinking I would just show you that, uh, I found this, which is the 
the tube of a builder's expanding gap filling foam and uh, I thought well I could maybe bend that with some heat and that would make a, a good sort of surreal periscope but I think actually what I'm going to do is uh, just cut that that end bit off there that end bit will make a very good forward pointing bit I'm sure it's got a technical term um, for the front of the of the of the periscope so I shall cut that off fill it with a little bit of a little bit of green stuff when I've cleaned the gunk out which is the expand the old expanding foam and uh, and probably drill a hole and insert this periscope into it I think that'll look okay so yeah collect um, all the little bits you can over years and store them in boxes under your bed so here it is undercoated outside in the old coal house and uh, the temperatures are near freezing there's a train going past uh, just using ordinary cheap uh, car body pray well cheapest car body pray, uh, spray primer that's the undercoat this kind of red color that used to be called red lead it looks a bit uh, orangey there Try not to breathe too much of it in. Get it straight back indoors to dry. Here we are, it suddenly takes on a wonderful unity when uh, you spray it all the same colour. It's, uh, it's gone to a stage now which I feel slightly excited about the project again. Um, I forgot to spray the the front, the weather has got outside has got even worse, it's now below freezing. I'm gonna to have to go out somehow and uh, spray that. Uh, but there's the there's the submarine coming together, there's the there's the periscope, there's the uh the uh, observation chamber that's gonna go on the back there, and uh, there's the eye that's gonna go in the in the front aperture. And I found another picture by the uh, the artist who produced this one, and uh, still unidentified, other than there is his signature. And uh, this, that's the the first one I found. And there's the stuff, second one. This one's got wonderful claws and things, and has got uh, definitely, definitely going to steal this idea. Already started making some gnome clothes that are going to go on their washing machine. But what these two designs have that mine doesn't, and there seems to be a, a thing that's missing visually, is uh, a, a, a rudder, a rudder or a tail. So I'm going to draw some kind of fishtail shape on this uh, plastic uh, milk bottle and... Uh, have a go at uh, constructing something and that will give me an opportunity to put some more wires and rods in which is the other characteristic uh, thing that lets these uh, these designs have their distinctive style hey look at this i i uh, cut the milk bottle open in order to sort of draw a shape on a flat white side of that and then i noticed that the the bottom is actually stronger and it's got these these ridges that's black spray paint from yesterday and if i get if I draw a shape on there i get mm, the bottoms of two milk bottles i'm gonna have to dig through the recycling bin again and stick them back to back i've got a much more interesting sort of ridgy structure and it's much much tougher not not flimsy and almost as soft as thin card We're at the uh, stage of painting, 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 and uh, this is a uh, this is a second coat, but it looks like it's going to need three coats. And I'm deliberately painting quite roughly, and not painting into the cracks and crevices where I think rust would have developed. And all of that is going to be uh, enhanced by. Uh, washes and some more detailed painting but I'm deliberately allowing some of the 
undercoat to show through in uh, in areas. I'm just using this, this very cheap, very very cheap children's acrylic paint, and it's um, it's doing the job. As I say, it looks like it's going to need uh, three uh, three coats in some areas. I want it to look like damaged paint, not like it was put on too thinly to begin with. In between coats, I'm working on the uh, gnome clothes that are going to hang on the washing line. One of them's got uh, hearts on his boxer shorts under his uniform. So we're coming along. This is uh, where we are so far. And um, I'm now at the stage of uh, actually buying odd bits because even though it Project's cost me very little so far. You get to the point where you think, oh, I must just have something. And uh, that periscope didn't look quite right. It needs, this will be painted, but it just needed a kind of rim on the front edge. So I'm buying a packet of 13 millimeter washers. Uh, the observation room is on there with some rivets that needs to be painted over and was as fiddly as the previous rivets but I'm now mostly thinking about uh, detailing the the inside the deck as I've been fiddling about with little uh, little ridges for how that door is going to fit on there just starting to think about how to do a hinge on that which is not easy because it's curved this is go this is the other part of the pen uh, and it's going to be the uh, the inside bit of the periscope, so I'm looking at pictures of what um, real and uh, historical submarines periscope fittings look like in the inside. I haven't quite figured that out yet. And then uh, I want this deck to, to, to look uh, metallic, so and this nice roll of um, mesh which I bought for sculpture years ago. I cut some pieces of that, I somehow cut those in to make them look like sort of features of a of a deck area. This is the um, tray of some chocolate biscuits or something, and I really like that that ridging. That's going to look like uh, to me. That really suggests there's a, a, a motor or an engine in there under that. So we're going to try and get it to look uh, not like uh, cork. Try and make it look like um, steel, and uh, also of course the uh, the monstrous eye is a sort of second way for the, the, the gnomes to see what's going on outside. And that's going to be more magical, so they're going to need some kind of screen. I want to figure out some sort of circular screen. And actually there's three ways, um, four ways if you include those little portholes, of seeing out. They've got a periscope, uh, they've got an eye of some um, aboleth or some under undersea creature. Uh, and they've got the observation chamber. I've got a feeling that will get written into the story. I suspect that uh, the ship might go increasingly blind when it's under attack. Now, why I'm fiddling about with uh, the inside, uh, things have happened on the on the outside. I'm, I'm struggling with the connection of the hinge here for this. Originally, I had it hinged to the top. I've had to change that because when I first want to reveal the uh, uh, ship in the storyline it's going to be in dock so they'll only see it let me see the top of it um, the eye is in place and I'm working on the area around the eye and the, uh, the, the, the viewing lens is in place and the periscope is stuck on and I'm working on um, the, the inside I had to buy some washers to work on it make the periscope look a little bit better um, now, back in the original uh, sort of inspiration pictures, one of the things that characterises the whole look of the thing is all these masts. Well, um, here's some bits. This is uh, some kind of uh, unthreaded bolts and the bit of plastic that came with it. I found this in my bits box. It was originally uh, like a folding footstool or, or something, a piece of piece of furniture and that was the the bolt that came out of it and uh, I think that is going to be a chimney because uh, they're going to need a chimney uh, for their for their stove 
quite sure how it's going to stick together. Maybe maybe that way, something like that. Uh, and this is a uh, spout from something like uh, I think it was expanding foam or, or or something. Might have been some kind of mastic, but anyway, something that was shot through there. And uh, the little things got stuck inside. Won't do that again. That uh, piece was inside that that tube, the foam or whatever it was, was supposed to be, I don't know, stirred or aerated or something. But that is going to make a great mast as well, I think. Now, the ship wouldn't have radio masts, but uh, maybe it's a, um, like a huge magic wand or something that lets, helps them to communicate. And um, at the same time, I'm trying to do uh, transfers for the writing. At the moment, it's going wrong. Evidently, that's the wrong kind of varnish. I did let it uh, dry a long time, but it crackled. A certain amount of distressing on the on the whole thing is um, is okay, but that's gone just a little bit too far. So uh, I'm next going to try. This is uh, this is uh, slide transfer decal paper. And it's quite it's quite expensive, and particularly when you think you're going to get it right and you buy a single sheet. Um, but uh, I've used it before and I will get it right again with perseverance. This is the periscope uh, that's going to be inside and uh, it's the, 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 the pen tube. I drilled uh, drilled holes in it, put a cocktail stick through and then uh, moulded that on with green stuff. And actually it was really hard to drill through this tube. It was ridiculous. It got, it got really hot. Something to do with the... You know, the steel and the the um, actual enamel on the surface my drill just wouldn't bite and now I've decided that I'm actually going to have, need to drill out that oval as well I could have just painted it black uh, but somehow I think I want to drill it out it's going to take a long time to drill that out and basically drill a hole and then use a, a small grinding tool or an engraving tool and just patiently grind away grind away grind away um, the Dremel is wonderful for most things. You need it on one of these flexible cords. Flexible shaft, I should have said. That's what that is, not a flexible cord. And um, the job proved easier than I thought. Still took about 20 minutes. Uh, drilling a hole first, this time with a sharper bit, uh, and then using that particular uh, tool to grind away and make the hole larger and larger and, uh, and that's the result that's ready to be painted out she'll paint black inside the hole and then uh, the rest of it's going to be painted the same uh, bronzy color to match the um, outside of the periscope i'm working now on um, the out the outside and the inside i'm a little bit disappointed with the the, the uh, water slide decal of the name but i will be masking that and I'm working on these sort of masts and things. This is the uh, the chimney that uh, they have for their for their stove and kettle, uh, and that's that's why the uh, submarine can't be uh, below that depth for more than about an hour because the uh, crew start to mutiny if they can't get their cup of tea. And this is uh, some kind of communications device. This has been uh, given to them by uh, an arch wizard. Um, it's sort of basically a kind of giant wand that they can send messages with. Uh, they're not using magic, of course. They're merely adapting something that's been given to them. Um, and this, uh, I'm putting these wires in. This is um, florist wire. And uh, you can buy it on a coil or you can buy it in straight lengths. This is on straight lengths because once it gets kinked or bent, you can never get it straight again. And these are just gluing in place at the moment. Those are going to go into the hull. And they're all sort of suggestive of uh, rigging on old uh, sailing ships. And while the various bits on there are, are drying, um, the periscope is in place. I'm doing some rust effects on these uh, grills through which the player characters will be able to see the creatures swimming about in the hold. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the actual floor surface there. I'm kind of mucking about, uh, trying to make a decision on what, what's best to do with that. This is going to be the actual control device. Um, it'll be basically when, when the gnomes panic, whenever 
things get into difficulty and I want player characters to make decisions, they'll be putting their hand on that button and uh, controlling the ship through the power of their mind. No magic involved, of course. And then um, this kind of block that suggests engine is on there and I'm using uh, drinking straws or becoming uh, very politically incorrect these days. But I've still got some and um, I'm using them to suggest pipes like I did on the outside. That's just tap taped down at the moment because uh, glue is setting. Here's uh, how things are progressing. Um, there's some wires going on there. There's uh, this thing that is, I don't know, whatever kind of engine they've got. Uh, this this thing up here is going to be a bit of pipe work. That was actually the, the sort of squeezable trigger tube of um, the uh, expanding builder's foam. I think I'm going to paint it uh, this, uh, this coppery colour so that my slimy stuff in there will be lost. I might, I might think about that and keep it clear. The little uh, popper studs have gone on because I think those look fantastic as like valve wheels. Uh, this is the control mechanism here. I started to do some rust effects painting on uh, the hatches. It's probably got to be toned down a little bit. Uh, this is the periscope in position now. But this is going to uh, be the support of the, the other uh, viewing uh, thing that connects to the uh, visual cortex of the creature that they've killed. So the, 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 Next to the eye in the front of the uh, in the front of the submarine, and then uh, that's coming on with more rigging and things being built up, and uh, the the washing line is is being stuck and is drying. That's going to be a problem to actually make make those clothes sort of hang properly because they're so light, they're just made out of paper. It may have to be sort of. Uh, kind of stuck into position with the uh, clear varnish so it actually looks like they are hanging under the uh, under the effect of gravity and uh, it's time for a coffee and um, the main thing to tell you is uh, I just had a radical thought about uh, the deck I don't I'm not happy with that um, that silvery deck um, so I've been thinking about the, the, the color of this this bronze um, which is Vallejo Tinny Tin, this ridiculously named paint colour because it's nothing like uh, nothing like tin at all. Um, and I looked at the colour wheel, and uh, the opposite of that sort of brown is is blue, like a sort of navy to medium blue. And it may be a catastrophe, but I think I'm going to paint the deck blue. Um, because that will that will contrast the most with these pipeworks, which are all going to be painted in the the bronzy colour. The reason they're not painted at the moment is because all those fiddly little bits are are uh, drying because of the the glue. Well, the noise is the uh, the Dremel cutter away again, like mad again, because I'm bodging at this stage. That uh, part of the kettle there is uh, in the way of the internal parts of the of the deck. So we've got to cut it away. That's not ideal because I've got to do it without uh, damaging all the delicate pits. And the... this is still a, a, a problem. The flange is uh, is still paper, and even with those reinforcements, it keeps getting damaged. And that's done. It was tricky because there were lots of sparks cutting through that metal. Metal, and um, we've got plastic and paper and card now. So I managed to avoid it without. Uh, Starting a fire. Ah, I'm really getting a bit frustrated with the project now because I need to be finishing it. It's taken uh, months now, but um, still something that I decided is not quite right. What what's sort of missing that that makes it it needs to be submariney is uh, a, a a rail uh, around the top of the conning tower. And um, I could do that with, with sort of individual uh, sticks and, and wires, um, but I'm thinking a, an easier and slightly different way of doing it might be to use another 
one of these. It took me a while to actually to, to remember what sort of a tub that had been. My measuring I worked out is one of these. So I've had to eat more cream cheese. And I'm going to try and cut the, 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 the top of that and then uh, cut the uh, oval out of there and, and see if I can make a, a, a top rail. If it doesn't work, it'll be sticks and wire, which will be more fiddly and more time consuming. Uh, there we go, that's that cut down. I think it's going to have to be um, undercoated with the uh, red lead oxide colour and then painted separately. Uh, and then it's going to be stuck on because it wants to, it wants to slip down snugly. So it will have to be uh, padded out a little bit when I fix the two pieces together. Uh, but I think that looks like a, a better conning tower effect. I've decided I'm just not going to be happy with the slide-on decals. It's too too whitish. It looks too much like a slide-on decal. So now I'm sort of hand painting around it, paint green, and then I'll go over the lettering again. And it's um, fussy and time-consuming, and it's using a teeny tiny little brush. And um, yeah, frustrating. Perfect is the enemy of done. Well, at uh, long, long last, uh, I'm pleased to say that um, I'm just about there, which is to say not finished, but uh, ready to do uh, the really nice bit, which is the, the, the final painting of the outside. Um, there's just the, uh, there's the washing line there and uh, the outside and the inside. And uh, I'm not going to do anything more to the inside because I'm out of time with that now. But there's uh, all the bits in place. There's some sp spill oils, oil near near the uh, the valves on the deck. And there's enough of a sort of uh, amusing explanation for how all the different bits there work to satisfy me. Um, but now it's the case of looking back at these uh, original inspiration images and starting to put all that grunge on there and we're looking at rust and verdigris uh, I think what they're, what they're probably doing is what they did with the early copper bottomed warships of the early uh, pre-Victorian navy when they didn't realise that uh, copper and iron don't go very well together in, in seawater and if you fix copper sheeting with iron nails uh, you tend to get enhanced corrosion. But, um, we'll assume these gnomes don't have that sort of chemical understanding yet, and they're making the same mistake. And uh, so next, it's going to be uh, using my um, paints, and I use I use the, um, Vallejo uh, acrylics. Sometimes I use these cheaper, cheaper kinds as well. Uh, and I only ha actually have a few inks. Uh, they do game colour and game ink, and uh, but if you dilute the uh, game colours enough, I imagine that one's going to get uh, get used a fair bit to get that um, verdigris effect. If you dilute them enough, you get a pretty good staining type effect. I should put the whole thing in a deep baking tray and just uh, run dribbles of uh, very thin watercolour over the surface. It is uh, basically black and uh, brown and then bits of orange. So I'm just uh, starting uh, very very small with uh, black where the dirtiest bits of the really deep rust will be around those rivets. And um, next I'm just going to touch those up with uh, a start. Uh, adding a little bit more brown um, and then finally it'll be uh, a little bit of orange so so actually it's a little bit of a um, little bit of black um, and then a greater amount of uh, terracotta brown and then a little bit of orange in most of these places I'm thinking about where the sort of rust would go and then occasionally just for fun really just letting it run and uh, when the sort of individual bits of rust uh, have gone into the areas where I think rust would occur most, there'll be some odd spotting of rust, and then there'll be sort of more 
looser and more randomised uh, washes of uh, the, the greeny blue stuff that's going to represent where the, where the coppery parts have corroded. And that is uh, about it. That's about um, where I got fed up narrating it all. Uh, please make sure that you're logged in on YouTube and uh, give it a like. Uh, and the channel is called Luncher 100. If you subscribe to that, uh, you might actually get uh, notified next time uh, I make something. Constructive criticism is always welcome in the comments. Um, and I'm going to leave you with uh, a few clips of what the petunia actually looked like uh, on the table um, in play in a D&D &D game. Um, with lights and uh, undersea terrain and a giant sea dragon turtle for her to fight. Um, and then uh, there's a, a, a little of her um, afterwards when um, I added a hull, um, which was made by putting uh, paper mache over a yoga ball um, and then assembling a stand out of uh, bits of old plumbing. Um, and then it was... Uh, uh, was submitted to the Rugby Open art exhibition uh, and I'm pleased to say it was accepted um, and it went into uh, that exhibition and was enjoyed by all the fine art people. Thank you.